Well, hi there, everybody. I'm Como 4 meteorologist Shannon O'Donnell, talking lightning and that incredible display of thunder and lightning, heavy downpours, gusty winds that we had here in the Pacific Northwest over the weekend. Exceedingly rare in our part of the country. And this is just one of many photos of all of that forked lightning that is going off for hours and hours around Puget Sound on Saturday night and Sunday morning. This photo courtesy of Tammy Goforth, who, by the way, just moved here from Florida and loved all the lightning, said she felt right at home. But as we know, if you've lived here for a very long period of time, lightning like this is not typical here in the Northwest. It's very, very rare. Oh. What an interesting event that was. I, I tried to get to bed so early last night because I knew it was going to wake me up in the process. I'm glad I did because it did. Did it wake it you woke up? Me yeah, up. there was one moment I had the sheets pulled up and I'm like, okay, here we go. I was ready for it. It didn't even wake up my dog, but at one point, the window, it was just daylight. Yes. And the thunder was so loud. It was just amazing. Intense. And there are a couple of reasons behind that and this storm being so different. We're going to kind of explore that. Uh, you need three real main ingredients to fire off a convective round of thunderstorms like that. And we often have the first two. No problem. You need moisture. We have plenty of that around the Pacific Northwest, certainly with uh, lots of rainfall here and nine months out of the year. You also need a lifting mechanism to get thunderstorms going. Well, we've got the lift too. You need an area of low pressure or some mountains and topography. We get that all the time as well. The ingredient that we are normally missing is the massive instability that comes with convective storms like what we just experienced. And that is set up when you've got a huge temperature lapse rate, meaning it's really hot at the surface and it's much, much cooler aloft. That is common, especially around other parts of the country, east of the Rockies. You get the hot air down at the surface from the Gulf of Mexico. It's hot, it's moist. You get the cold, dry air aloft coming in from Canada, and that creates a lot of instability. That's where we're around here, but we did see that same setup over the weekend. Again, this kind of lightning is rare. The last time we had something similar, if you're a Husky, you might remember better than others. It was September of 2019. Remember when that storm came in and the lightning was just lighting up the sky so much that they had to delay the Husky football game by a couple of hours. So it's been about five years since we've seen something similar. This past weekend, we experienced thousands of strikes around the Northwest, including three to 4,000 here just in the state of Washington. And I think what impressed me the most as a meteorologist who's been forecasting here in the Northwest for about 30 years was was just the fact that it was so incredibly accurately modeled. We've been talking about this at Como for the days leading up to the storm, but by Thursday and certainly Friday, the day before, the future cast models that were coming out for Saturday, the day of the storm, storm had the structure and the timing of these convective showers nailed down very consistently, not budging. The fact that these were gonna be rolling up the I-5 corridor in kind of this crescent moon shape starting between 7 and 8 o'clock p.m., entering in the South Sound and then marching north. And the radar that was on top of the storms as they were coming in was almost identical to the models that had been forecast there leading up to the storm to a T in terms of the timing and the structure. And just as a long-term meteorologist around here to see the progression of the technology really take off like that, even versus the September 2019 storm five years ago, we couldn't have forecasted it that well, that accurately. So it's just really impressive to see the progression of technology really get a grasp on these storms over time. From the Como 4 Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Shannon O'Donnell.